Right, so uh, hi there, I'm Robert Fuller, wildlife artist uh, from here on the Yorkshire Wells. It's a beautiful place to live. And um, today I'm going to talk to you about my children's climbing frame and all the wildlife that I've encouraged onto there. And it's been a really, really fun project. So I'm going to show you a few videos uh, of the climbing frame and all the wildlife we've managed to capture on there. We've had a full camera rig on there for nearly three years now. So it's been, uh, you know, a fascinating process that these cameras are rolling every day, uh, recording by motion when wildlife comes onto that climbing frame. And I've also encouraged wildlife there as well. So it's uh, been a really fun project. So Will's just going to start off with uh, showing you some videos and uh, you know give you an idea of, of the sort of animals we've captured there. Where do you want to start today? Uh, start with the two shot, shall we? <laughs> the double. <laughs> so this is uh, me setting up to photograph weasels and one of the biggest questions I get here is how do I manage to uh, get so much done throughout each day? And look at that, there's another Robert Fuller there. That's <laughs> This is Will playing jokes with me. Uh, you know, he said, have a look at the videos that we're going to play today. And all of a sudden there's two of me. So he's done a cheeky splice down the video uh, and created two of me. I wish there was two of me. It'd be uh, a lot easier. I could then choose whether I'm the person that's outside doing the wildlife or if the weather's bad, I can be inside uh, painting it. Uh, so anyway, we'll get rolling with the, uh, with the footage. And uh, this is my climbing frame. Uh, not my climbing frame, my girl's climbing frame. Uh, so we bought this second hand uh, after a family had finished with it and I rebuilt it uh, for the girls but it wasn't long before the wildlife started to come in. We've got Vin Weasel here, he's a little male weasel uh, coming in to take a look. You could see me in the background there on that shot. But this is the, some of the stuff I managed to capture of him. Absolutely fabulous little character this one. And uh, very much like, uh, unlike Stokes, I can actually get um, Weasels quite accustomed to me. Stokes always stay really wild, whereas weasels I can actually uh, get them more used to me. There's even a deer here popping by, and we've got a bullfinch there uh, drinking out of the paddling pool. We've got a jet flying overhead at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we've got the Stokes on there. These are one of the first uh, mammals that I spotted on the climbing frame, and I couldn't believe it when uh, I could see images like this. I had an inkling of using the, um, the climbing frame, but it wasn't until I put all the cameras on there I saw how popular it was. And I put some little tidbits of food out, and this is Vin Weasel breaking the code. He's actually opening that door, and it lights up and plays a little tune when the door's opened, and uh, it didn't phase him at all. Uh, but this is him, he sometimes put food in his bucket, not in his bucket, so he bobs over and flips the tongue down on the kiddie's boot uh, to get a little morsel of food. Uh, so he was really great fun to work with. And then as night falls, you know, we get the owls there. And this is a fabulous bit of footage. Uh, we've got stoats, barn owls, tawny owls. This is bandita, our female uh, stoat. And then we've got the badgers. I was feeding hedgehogs down there and the badgers soon sound, found the food. So I thought I'd test them out a little bit more. Uh, and this is one of the uh, badgers uh, actually trying to get some food down off the climbing wall and swinging around on the rope. And again, they use the paddling pool. So that's the little video. So we'll move on to uh, some other subjects on there and some more footage uh, that we're going to cover. What's next, Will? Oh, this is uh, me with the with Vin Weasel. This is uh, the actual clip. This is yeah. This is the real clip. Um, so I'm there setting up uh, cameras ready for Vin Weasel to come in and uh, he, uh, he's around, he waits for me in the hedges and he was, a, he was a little weasel that would actually shadow my movements throughout the garden because I knew I would give him some little tidbits of food. So he became really accustomed to me. I've literally just walked off camera and he's, he's in straight away. Look at he's there, looking at me, checking me out. Uh, so he was a fabulous little male completely wild stoat, but I worked with him for so many hours, he, he had a trust of me and uh, I habituated him uh, so I could actually work with him incredibly closely. And there's little moments that even surprised me really when, when he would actually come within 
you know, just a few feet of me sometimes. So I'm busy setting up here, trying to work out all my settings on my camera. And uh, he, he's around in the area, so he was using like some vole holes uh, to get close to me. But there he is, coming out in the corner of the screen. <laughs> he clearly knows I'm there, but he's cheeky enough to whiz in and uh, grab a bit of food. And this is, you know, when you see him dashing away, this is actual real speed. They're so, so quick when they decide they're off quite tentative but look how fast that is when he leaves absolutely great little weasel that one he's no longer with us he 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 was first uh, seen by me in 2018 and uh, he's reigned up until now so he's been with us two years which is quite good going for weasels there's obviously a lot of dangers out there a lot of owls the stoats uh, foxes further afield so they have they have a lot of pressure on these little little tiny predators, the weasels, but I was, you know, delighted to share the garden with him for two years, uh, just over two years it was. And then this is more nighttime activity. This, these are the barn owls uh, come in uh, to feed. So when I feed the supplementary feed the owls, I, I sort of choose where I do it in the garden. Uh, and last winter I chose uh, the climbing frame. I was doing a, a piece on the one show about the children's climbing frame the BBC one show and uh, spent most of the winter feeding the barn owls uh, on the climbing frame so I set up a hide and managed to capture these wonderful images uh, in the moonlight uh, with a bit of extra uh, white light thrown in there Yeah, so what else have we got to see there, Will? What's our next clip? Oh, we've got to have the stoats. These are just fabulous. So this is uh, Doc, one of our male kit stoats from this year. And he, uh, he uh, for some reason, lost the end of his tail, uh, the black tip to his tail. But he was a real character. Uh, we haven't seen him for a few months now. And this is uh, his sister. So this, I think, probably is Olga, this one. Uh, and she was a... Uh, fabulous little character but you can see the size difference in between the male and the female there even when the kits but they just love the texture of this uh, um, trampoline uh, little kiddies trampoline and this was going to go to uh, a charity shop for another family and I <laughs> seized it back off my wife and said no I'm keeping this for my stokes and I'm so pleased I did this is uh, a um, just the most, one of the most fabulous things that we see here are the stoke kits when they uh, start playing on this trampoline. It's just, <laughs> you kind of want to join them really, just rolling around, fighting, playing. And we've had whole litters on here at the same time uh, as well. Uh, but they just love, love this area. And we've got, uh, there's Doc on again. I mean, you, you can just watch, you don't need normal television, you can just watch this for hours. And this is all the same encounter? Yeah, this is all, all, all happened at once. Uh, so this is like, it's not clips put together. They've absolutely got boundless energy where they just keep going and going, fighting, playing. Um, you know, they can do this for ages. And they're not just fighting here. When they leave uh, the trampoline and the climbing frame, they're fighting and playing in other areas in the grass. Uh, different areas. This is Ed and Olga. Ed and Olga, yeah. So this is uh, two more. He, he looks a bigger stoat, um, bigger male stoat. But even sort of full grown, the females are around about 240-ish uh, grams. The males are another 100 grams heavier. Um, so quite a bit bigger, the males. Uh, but it's just great to see them on there. And I think this could be the grand finale um, for the piece. So this is Olga and she's uh, doing a solo here. We call her Olga after the gymnast, the Olympic gymnast, uh, because what she uh, busts out some moves here. And this is going to be uh, a great grand finale where she just literally <laughs> bounces herself off uh, the thing. So, uh, yeah, so we'll just get me bit back big again. You know, Will was busy looking at the weasel, so uh, in the pen over there, yeah, got Ron, distracted. Ron's <laughs> active today. Yeah. Yeah, so if there's any questions, I'll take any questions now. And I uh, hope you enjoyed having that little insight into the children's climbing frame. So Lotta Greaves on Facebook asks, do you have a favorite owl in your garden? Oh God, that's too difficult a question. Um, 
And my favourite probably was Barney, you know, but he's he's possibly no longer with us now. But uh, you know, and there was an, another one that we had throughout the summer, and uh, he was a rescue owl that we had last year uh, that we released here, and that was called Crazy Dave. He would actually. Um, He'd be just be everywhere, and he would often come in um, while we're eating our tea a lot earlier in the evening. And he was just trying to avoid conflict with Barney, so he would literally come flying in uh, and wait around in the garden. I actually trained him just to uh, go and land on our gallery signs. So if you see any gallery sign clips of a barn owl, that's a crazy day of a male barn owl. We lived further up the valley that way, but he would he would return uh, back to base where he was. Uh, you know, sent out into the wild uh, for his uh, supper each evening. Um, Sender Quinta Books on YouTube asks, which owls have been in Elm Stump recently? Could it be Bronte and a male courting? Yeah, so I haven't uh, properly checked that last night, but when I was outside late last night feeding, there was uh, a male barn owl <coughs> calling continuously for, for a mate, and it's just uh, this prolonged uh, one-tone screech. Uh, and, and that's a male, it's the same same call each time, whereas if it's a territorial call, it's a much higher pitch and uh, it, it's more of a variable call, but it was just calling over and over again. So uh, we'll look into that and let you know which house it is, but you're probably, you're probably right with your guess. Uh, but that's a great sign that we've got, um, you know, the arm stump, because it is one of my favourite boxes, that one. It's, it's a huge box, it's beautiful, well it's an old tree stump, but nest box tree stump, but it's an absolutely massive, you know, and it's such a beautiful structure, uh, we definitely want barn owls breeding in there again. A whimsical Guide on YouTube asks, what licenses do you need to make an owl box in the UK? So to make an, an owl box, you don't need any license whatsoever. Any, anyone can make an owl box and put it up. Uh, the technicalities come when you actually go back. Yeah, sorry about that, someone tried calling me on my phone. Yeah, so you don't need a license uh, to put up an owl box. You need a license to either film and photograph them, and you need a license as well um, to study them, um, like going and doing nest checking and ringing. So they're the two nice licenses that you need, uh, that I need, and that I have uh, one for photography and filming, and I have one, uh, a license to disturb for nest record purposes. I'm not a licensed ringer, so I, I work with Jean, who is a licensed ringer, and other licensed ringers. So, uh, yeah, so it's a uh, Natural England Photography and uh, the BTO, British Trust for Ornithology, for uh, a license to do nest uh, box checking. Use on YouTube asks, do you put treats out to encourage wildlife, or are they just curious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I do, do supplement, uh, feed the wildlife here uh, and that's everything from the small garden birds uh, to the barn owls, the kestrels uh, and the stoats. So some people uh, you know pass comment and frown on that and uh, everyone is clearly entitled to their opinion uh, but that, that's the way I do it here. We've got um, barn owls you know have been in steep steep decline, we've got kestrels dramatic uh, decline in the country of kestrel populations and when we get periods where the weather hits hard here, um, you know, I've been out in one day, I've picked up 30 dead barn owls in one day uh, after, after a bad spell of weather. And if I can get them bird, those birds used to uh, a little bit some supplementary fed, I will, because uh, after that uh, year, it took years and years and years to get back uh, to where we are today with the barn owl population here. Um, yeah, so I, I do have whatever I can to help the wildlife. And a lot of the birds um, here, especially the barn owls, they're barn owls that have actually um, uh, not made it as a wild bird. And uh, so we've, we've had chicks brought in, we've had a few this year. Uh, and those uh, birds, you know, will, will struggle. They simply wouldn't have survived unless we took them into care. And potentially they wouldn't then get through the winter uh, if you just release them without continuing. Uh, helping them out with a bit of food. Strix asks, if there's enough space, will female barn owls stay in the area or is there an equal chance of them leaving? Yeah, yeah, so the, exactly that, yeah. So uh, 
in our valley here, I, I lived, I've lived here over 20 years, it took me 17 years before I got barn owls nesting in that valley and that was mainly due to the, uh, uh, the dominance of the tawny owls um, but as I've got more barn owls here, uh, you know, everyone's seen on the live stream how uh, brutal the tawny owls can be with other uh, kestrels and barn owls um, so that's the main reason we didn't have one of the main reasons we didn't have barn owls nesting in this valley was uh, uh, the bullishness of the tawny owls but we've seemed to have tipped that balance where we're we're literally inundated with barn owls now through the work I've done here and uh, there always is a chance that we get to to uh, nest um, I'm always planning for a second nest as well with the barn owls and the tawny owls uh, just in case we have a nest here that fails uh, and we can still bring you live uh, images next year of a tawny owl nest. So that's something that I'm planning for. I am planning for a second barn owl nest, nest as well, whether it's next year or the year after. I will uh, hopefully be able to bring you two live streams of uh, barn owls and tawny owls. Jennifer Comerford asks, which visitors or visits surprised you the most? Which visitors? I think the best visit I had was uh, just before Christmas one year, uh, Bandita turned up uh, ermine. She was actually uh, called Tash uh, originally. I'm looking at some photographs of her on the wall there. So when she was a little kit, she was called Tash. And uh, when she then grew up, uh, she disappeared for nearly two years. And uh, yes, this is her here. Uh, she disappeared for nearly two years and when she arrived back she was actually ermine. Not this stoat, um, but uh, it's probably a relation. This one was further down the valley, but she was called Tash because of the little Tash line under her nose. And then uh, that winter uh, she arrived at Christmas. She'd been with us in October for a little while and I just hadn't pinpointed who this stoat was. Uh, uh, and then she appeared pure ermine, uh, which was literally the best thing for Christmas. Um, Sijuani on YouTube asks, where does Howard spend his time now? Can he hunt for himself? <laughs> We're hoping Howard is learning. Howard's a, a little bit of a slow learner, I think, with uh, catching on. So he's um, been calling for food, food the last few nights again, uh, which is something, you know, he's, he's of an age where he should be trying to hunt and catch his own food but again he's come to us as a, uh, a young owlet and he's probably going to need support for you know through the winter uh, to get him going so you know quite often I hold, hold food off until uh, you know midnight some nights that I feed, feed him sort of last we've got other owls going in and pinching the food so if I've got a young owl here for instance that needs food administering to it it's a very tricky thing to do is to actually get that food to that individual owl uh, that you want it because they're all, the owls are out here, they all know who I am <laughs> and uh, uh, especially Bomber, I have to be very careful, Bomber doesn't see me uh, doing special deliveries of food because he'll just come bulldozing in uh, and pinch it potentially. So uh, yeah, so he, he should be trying to hunt, uh, that's what we're hoping for, we've got a low uh, vol numbers out there at the moment which is their main food source um, but he hasn't been feeding that much on the branches here he's mainly been having food that I've put out for him in the uh, elm tower and sycamore stump. Linda Paxton on Facebook asks why don't the owls attack the stoats? <laughs> they do, <laughs> quite a simple answer to that we'll have to do a confirmation uh, at some point of all of that sort of behaviour happening because uh, they simply do but you wouldn't you wouldn't choose to attack a stoat if you if you were wise so they won't have a face-to-face -face, um, attack uh, with a stoat but they, they will challenge a stoat uh, and vice versa so it, it, it happens sort of both ways that uh, stoats, stoats will uh, uh, go for the owls, uh, mainly just to push them off the food, but the owls will retaliate. If an owl's on the wing, it can simply just knock uh, the stoat off the uh, branch that it's on. So, uh, yeah, but Bandita, she's got three nicks in her ear. Uh, two of those nicks were, nicks were done by Bomber. I actually uh, managed to get footage of Bomber. Uh, you know, there's a difference in between a stoat being knocked off a branch than an owl going in for the kill. and. Uh, 
and Bummer one day was going in for the kill with Bandita, but she managed to uh, spin her, spin Bummer off. They're very, very uh, elastic stoats are, and they, even when they kill in prey, they have this thing that they keep spinning, keep spinning the body, and that confuses the prey, but it also works when they get caught. They can spin around on themselves, and they spray an obnoxious smell, just like a skunk. Um, not just like a skunk, but pretty, pretty bad. Uh, so they, they have... Uh, they're not something you would want to take on. If an owl gets bitten badly on its leg, they can then get an infection, and uh, uh, that's sort of bad news for an owl. Um, the chatters are asking if they can see Ron. I think he might have gone back into his sleeping bag. We can try, uh, uh, but we're all connected here. I don't know how we would do that. We'll Maybe do. We'll, we could save him and show tomorrow potentially yeah, for our final night. We'll we'll reconfigure net tomorrow, and we can maybe get you wrong tomorrow. He's just been very active before, so if we, we can remain very hopeful, he might be active again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> he was doing performance just then. Yeah. Um, Miss M asks, do you have any plans for Chester the weasel? Yeah, yeah, so he's going to go out pretty soon. We wanted uh, our other stoves to go out and just everything to settle a little bit, but I think we're going to release him quite soon, maybe next week. Uh, and then uh, Ron will go out into that enclosure or into the one where the stoves are. So yeah, we're, we're making plans to, to do that. Um, there's a general question, which is how is Drax, which may be good to... to yeah, yeah I, can, I can touch on Drax. So uh, um, Jean's taken Drax to the vets and the vets are absolutely brilliant. They're gonna flush, flush her sinuses out today. They think she might have uh, got some uh, like pus pores still in her sinuses that have then reinfected her. She's been on two lots of antibiotics. She's been wormed. She's had everything thrown at her. So they're actually now, um, you know, trying flushing the sinuses. And then they're even going to, uh, if they're not satisfied with that, they're actually even going to make a little incision in between her ribs. Uh, and then they actually put a tiny camera in there. And this is to, uh, you know, check her, her lungs out and things. So they don't know uh, whereabouts this infection is at the moment. So are we looking at top half or are we looking, uh, you know, we, we're thinking it's uh, sinuses and um, that sort of area, which is less serious. If it gets into the uh, lung section, we're looking at something potentially more serious. So the, the vets are, are just got uh, battle flats, battle flats vets in Stamford Bridge. Absolutely fabulous uh, help with our wildlife. We can we can do, do so much here. Uh, uh, my, my sort of mission is to get this wildlife back into the wild and do it properly and gradually that they, uh, they, they, that they actually then manage and uh, the vets uh, and Jean do more of the medical sort of side of things. So I think that's all the questions for today. We do have the results here for the, for the poll of the name for the new barn owl. Right. So yeah. for anyone who hasn't been following, over on our uh, live streams, we've got a new male barn owl and we had a, uh, a poll open recently. Would you like to do the honours? Yeah, give us a clue. So um, I'll go, I'll do the, the <laughs> four, three and two and then I'll let you do the <laughs> final one. So in fourth position, we have Gwyn. Come on to camera, Will, don't be I shy. Can, they they all want to see Will, they all want to <laughs> see Will. <laughs> so I can let Rob do the final, the, the honours at the end. But in fourth position, we have Gwyn. Um, so thanks everyone who's voted. Uh, third position is Coda. Uh, second position, we've got Luca. And then finally, the one with the green. Ah. Oh. Ghost, ghost. <laughs> right, we've, we put that one in last, ghost. So uh, yes, that's the uh, name of the owl. So I think we're done, aren't we? Yes, I think that's yeah. it for today. Yes, and thanks for joining me. And uh, yeah, and a thank you to Will. He does all of this uh, fancy work with the video, uh, getting all the clips together for us to see. And uh, we should be back tomorrow. I'm off to the dentist tomorrow, so uh, root canal. So I'm hoping to be with you tomorrow. If if not, we'll delay it for a day. Uh, but take care, everyone, and uh, we'll see you.